Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. So today's video will be a rich text editor or so-called HTML editor. Uh, how you actually can uh, use it and how you can actually implement it in your project. There are a lot of people asking me about that uh, and uh, I finally had the time uh, to do this video. Uh, thanks for Ali actually who was pushing me to to do this. Uh, the package that we're going to use, I think it's the most popular one. Uh, why this is not opening? It should. So yeah, uh, this is the package. Uh, it's HTML editor enhanced. Uh, and I think, as I said, it's the most popular uh, HTML editor or rich editor out there uh, for Flutter. Uh, and uh, this is actually the final, let me show you the final result. So if I go to HTML editor, click over here and wait a little bit to, to, reload, to load. And this is a live demo. Uh, and I can say, okay, just make this over 10. 10 is not very good, maybe 18 to just for readability. And then I can make this italic, make this under line, and then probably I can make it like this, make it a center, and so on and so forth. Then I click Save Text. And when I click Save Text, now you can actually see it on the bottom. Let me just show you that. So you can actually see it on the bottom that uh, this text is changed. So how I did that, and it's actually uh, saved over here uh, in uh, Firestore as well. Uh, so if I change something, for example, demo 55, save this, now it's 55 and go over here and it's here, it's 55 as well. So how I did that, now uh, let me show you the setup my project. So first things first, of course, I have the navigation, which is navigating to this uh, page. When I go to this page, the only two things that I have is the my uh, custom widget, and we will dive into it in a second. And then the other thing that, that we have is the HTML view. And the HTML view is actually coming from the local host. And the local host is called text from HTML editor. And this is a simple string uh, local state. Uh, so uh, the important part here is that if you want to display this in your app after that, so when it's uh, when someone is uh, uh, saved something or someone has written something, uh, the widget that you need to use is the HTML view. And then let me go to the code. So when I go to the left side, this is my code. It's called my HTML editor. Uh, so yeah, actually Ali, now uh, we did some work with Ali. Ali finished it uh, because there were some uh, errors on the uh, widget, but he finished it. And now I, when I was preparing this video, I remember that he told me that uh, maybe it would be better uh, to have some way to store this in Firestore instead of storing it to the local stage, uh, to local storage, sorry, because right now uh, this is stored in the local store state uh, and I decided to uh, extend this code and now it's actually uh, storing in the Firebase as well. So if I delete this code, because right now the, the text is coming from uh, the local state, but it's saved on both places. So if I go over here, you should see that the save it, the text is still here. But if I change this number to 44, for example, click the save button, go over here, and now it's created a new document inside the HTML editor collection. And I did it like that uh, to take the first document and it's the only document that uh, is created. 
Uh, and if I change this, for example, this can be 77, save this, and now this is changed to 77. It's not creating a new document, it's updating. So if there is an existing document, it will update it. But if there is not, if there isn't a document, it will create it. So this is the code that it did. And it's also saving this to the local state. And the local state is persistent. So if I go over here, if I go, this is the name uh, of the local state variable. It's text from HTML editor and it's persistent. Persistent means that whenever if you change, uh, if you actually close the app, it will still remember what you wrote if you need this functionality, of course. Uh, if you are doing HTML editor, uh, sorry, uh, rich uh, text uh, editor or HTML text editor, and you don't need this because when a user closed this, uh, they probably don't need it if they didn't save it. Uh, but still, I think it's a good practice to have this auto load and when they click this uh, probably save it or when you click when you click some other button you can you can clear the data and clearing the data from the local state is very uh it's just uh, going to wherever action you you want and then just click of course update local state and then clear the data so it should be this over here and then it's a clear value over here. So you do it like that. But let me go to the code right now. So if I go to the code, this is the code. As I said, this is the widget that we are, uh, this is the package, sorry, that we are using. Uh, when you place the package over here, make sure to click this button. This is the package is coming from this page. I don't know why it's not loading when I click on it, but it's coming from this page. Uh, you can click from here or you can go to install installing and copy this line over here. And then when you're done, you need to import uh, this part over here. And then I, I, I name it my uh, package, my HTML editor. The code that Alice sent me, uh, the name of the, uh, of the custom uh, widget was uh, HTML editor and this was actually causing some issues and some errors so I changed this to I changed it to my HTML editor so this is the code the code will be actually on the this uh, in the description so if you need it it will be on the description on my github uh, repo so let me go through the code and the first line is creating the controller uh, this is a simple controller uh, that will manage uh, what you are writing inside your uh, field, uh, text field or rich text field. Uh, you have the same thing with the Flutter or Flutter flow. You have controller every time you have, for example, a text field. So this is the same thing. Uh, the second lines, the two lines over here are actually connection, the connection to the fires, uh, Firebase uh, because as I said, uh, what we're uh, done at the end of the day is that if there is no record created, if there is a record updated, so we need this connection over here. And then over here, uh, we get the init state, uh, which is the, uh, which we actually need in order to uh, create the actual connection uh, to the collection. In my case, the collection is called HTML editor. If I go over here, you can see the collection, it's called HTML editor. I only have one field, which is text. And then let's go back over here. And this is a part where we have the HTML editor. So the HTML editor have a controller, have the HTML editor options, uh, which we have the hint type, uh, uh, what says type your text probably, type your text here. And then we have the init, um, sorry, initial text. And this initial text, actually, it's coming from the argument. I forgot to, to tell you about it. So the argument, in my case, 
uh, it's uh, the current HTML, so you can pass this as well. Uh, and in my case, I'm passing this uh, from the local state. But of course, you can use uh, of course you can use uh, Firestore if you want to as well. So if I go over here, uh, sorry, it's not here. Of course, it's here. So if I go over here, um, this is the local state, and I'm passing it from over here but of course you can pass it uh, you can make a backend query and this will be the text editor it's a single document because we have only one document and you can actually pass it uh, like this it will make uh, so pass it like this we, we're getting the text and then if I instant uh, reload we should get the same thing. So we, we can either pass the local host or uh, Firestore, it doesn't really matter, we, whichever you prefer. We're passing it from over here, which is uh, from the argument. But in the argument, we can uh, set the local, as I said, the local storage or the Firebase one. And then we have the HTML uh, toolbar options. Uh, you can play with it. Uh, of course, you can see here all the options that are available. If you go to example, you can see all the options that are available. But those are the default, default ones, so I just leave it like that. And then you have the button, uh, which is uh, elevated button. Uh, and this button, when it's clicked, so on pressed, uh, we're doing a couple of things. So the first things that we're doing is that we're getting the data. So we're getting the actual text that is outputted from the uh, uh, from the from the text field or from the rich text field. So let me just show you first uh, when I change the argument and, and right now it's coming from Firestore. Uh, let me show you. So let me show you um, that this is loading again. As you can see here, it's loading again. If I change this to 8.8, for example, save it, it should work the same the same way. So you can see it over here. So as I said, you can either uh, pass the argument from the local storage or you can pass it from the uh, fire, uh, fire storage, uh, local state or fire storage, sorry. And then uh, when, you, when you get the data, when you get the actual uh, rich text uh, as a string, uh, you can save it to Firebase. And the way you used to save it in Firebase, uh, I already did uh, a lesson about that. I actually took my code uh, from update or insert doc. I did a video about that. Uh, so if you haven't watched it, just uh, watch it. It's one or two videos mm -hmm. from now. And then uh, this is actually the, uh, this is actually the class uh, that it's uh, providing that is providing the possibility to uh, create your uh, your HTML editor uh, document and we only need the text one the field which is the text and the data we're passing is the data and then we're creating this document and after that we're getting the collection reference which is coming from the 44 line uh, which is the collection of uh, HTML editor, so we're getting the reference. We limit it to one because we only need one document over there. And then we're getting get, so get the document in this collection. And then uh, we're turning the snapshot. The snapshot is a snapshot of the document. And then we are uh, executing. Uh, if, if there are any documents, uh, so if, if it's not empty, if there are any documents, and take the first document, which is docs zero, take the reference from it, and we get the document reference because we need it in order to update this document. And then we pass this with that update and then the actual doc, which is coming from over here to update the data <clears throat> and else. So this is how we update the document and this is how we create the document. So if there is no data, 
uh, created and there is data updated. And then we don't need this one, so we can delete it. And then the other, the second thing that we're doing is that we're updating the local state and we are doing this with the new uh, code, the new notation in uh, further flow, which is FF state update and then set state ff state dot and this is the most important part that you can probably change if you haven't named your local state as mine so mine is uh, text from html editor and then it this is equal to data which is coming from over here and the last thing is that what is the name of the text so it says tech save text uh, over here and this is actually what it says over here you don't see it anymore because uh, we are we run out of, run out of time but yeah i think you get the idea uh thank you very much for tuning in and uh let me just remind you that every mondays i do q and a's so if you want to ask any questions join the live stream and ask your questions there also so thank you very much thank you very much and see you on the next video